Bokeh Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live this morning. We have a very disturbing uh, news to bring out. Uh, Murad Gazdev, who is an RT reporter in Aleppo, stationed in Aleppo, uh, covering a, an attack by U.S.-backed rebels on a bus station. Bus station killing two children, wounding quite a few others. He is actually there at the hospital there only within the last couple of hours there. He has filmed the, the operations, tr doctors trying to save the lives of these children. Uh, so before you see this, we do caution those. It is graphic imagery here. I do not even think that uh, Mared's uh, uh, news has hit RT as of yet. If it, if it is, it's probably hitting at the same time that we're releasing ours. Let's go right to what, uh, what uh, Marad is actually showing here so that you get an idea of what's going on. He's stable for now. As, as Murad says, I know it's a little hard to hear there. He's in the operating room, uh, this young boy here. Uh, he also loaded a couple of others. This one here is very, very sad. Um, you know, I don't think I, I don't, I'll just show you. I'm not going to play the, Im okay. The two girls that he just showed here died in the attack there. They're only about six, seven years old, as he states there, um, that came into the hospital there. Again, this is our U.S.-backed rebels that are doing this type of attacks here. Uh, when they talk about so many that are being killed in Aleppo, uh, and they're always blaming this on the Russian-Syrian warplanes, but yet there are no Syrian-Russian warplanes that, uh, that can prove this. Uh, no, no images that they can show for this. Uh, this is, most of these people are being killed by the U.S. backed, uh, you know, whether it be the U.S. backed rebels, Al Nursa, they, they've all joined forces together under the same banner of the United States there in the country, even ISIS has. Uh, here's another young boy here in the operating room here. <clears throat> Right now, uh, this boy here is unconscious, but still alive. Uh, they're trying to save his life. And as you can see, the blood dripping off the table is just very heart-wrenching to see these images of these children that have been attacked by U.S.-backed uh, rebels here. This one here, I believe, is the little girl that her she came in with her intestines hanging out. She's five years old, and... She is in critical condition. The doctors are trying to save her life. This is Marad Gazdev, uh, who is trying to bring the attention to the world of what is happening to these children and this, the people of Aleppo. Um, it's just, like I said, it's very heart-wrenching indeed to see these things. And uh, I, I, it just, it, it troubles me, period. And I want to share with you, though, there was one video I wanted to bring to you the other day, and, and I cannot find it, but this one here on, on this particular news channel is uh, Syrian female snipers that are fighting in the Syrian army. It kind of gives a little bit of uh, what I was wanting to bring out, so I'm going to play part of this. I'll turn the volume down a little bit there because I want you to be able to see a particular thing that I'm wanting... I'm wanting you to understand about the difference between between the uh, the people that that fight in the Syrian army and those that are fighting for the U.S. backed rebels. All right. So, in this news report here, they take you uh, to Syria. There, there. I forget exactly how many. I want to say there's, there's over 2,000 women that have volunteered to fight in the Syrian army on as many as six different fronts that are fighting there. Uh, and these women are, are courageous. They, they're used as snipers in many cases. Uh, they have taken out many, many men. But watch these women here. I want you to notice these women, and I want you to see if you notice right off what you see differently. In fact, I'm just now thinking about that one video. I do believe I did post that on Facebook, so hopefully I'll be able to find that here in just a moment here. But there is, there is a unique thing about the women that you will notice uh, in, these video, in this video here. And let me move it forward here. Um, here we go. 
The thing that we see that is consistent over and over and over again about the women that are fighting in Syria for the Syrian government to free their, their land, like in this case, this picture here, is the equality. The equality of the men and women that fight in the armed forces. And no, they're not wearing the hajib. No, they're not wearing the burqas, uh, uh, the different things that they make the women to wear. But what's, what's ironic is that these women are doing that while all the while we have this type of scenario here of the women that are under the control of the men that the United States has, has brought in to, over, to, topple the Bashar, to topple Bashar al-Assad, the president of Syria. This is what the U.S. backs right here. The U.S. backs all these women that have to live in the burqas. Now this woman here actually wearing her burqa, filming it right through her face shield there. But this is the way they have to live. This is what Obama's administration is backing to topple Bashar al-Assad. And then you wonder about the refugee crisis in America and them bringing all of this same type of radicalism to the United States and to Europe. And this is what they want to bring. They want, they want to bring the people to where they can totally imprison these women. And this is who we fund as, as American citizens. This is what your tax dollars is paying for is to enslave these women under, underneath the banner of a bunch of radical uh, Islamists that are just totally insane in the way that they do these women. And uh, this woman here says, I hate them. I hate them very much. Because uh, she's why? She's under the bondage of these evil men that the United States is backing. And it's just, it's just insane. And this is, this is the point that we're trying to get across as well that we're seeing. And let me just quickly, I'll run over here to Facebook while we are still running our, our broadcast here, Israeli News Live on Facebook here, and just see um, if, if I can quickly pull that up for you. I, I remembered now I'd actually loaded it there and I'd actually asked the question um, of the people, you know, tell me what you see that is different in this. Um, by the way, too, the United States, uh, they have uh, launched uh, airstrikes on Yemen, uh, according to the reports that are coming out right now, against targets that are, um, that, uh, are against the Houthi rebels and, and they have targeted their ability. Ah, uh, here was the video, excellent. I'm glad I do have it. Uh, here, there again, here is another example of this right here. Watch what is, I want you to hear what they say in this video here. This is both men and women that are fighting to protect the Syrian con co country. Actually, I can turn it down a little bit because uh, I forgot that they all speak, they all speak in Arabic here. Again, the women and the men, they all run together. They're there fighting together. They're not wearing the hajib. They're not wearing burqas. They're not enslaved by the Obama regime's backed rebels and their bunch of thugs. All right, now let's move forward, though, to where we actually get to where they're talking. He says, my name is Hamdir Marhar. My name is Rim. I'm 27. I live in Aleppo. My name is Qas Kadir. I'm 31. I came from Damascus. I have been serving in the army for six years because I want to help. The Syrian Arab Army, Syrian President Assad. And to protect all people all over Syria. I used to live in a regular civilian person. I owned a small transport company. I quit my job after I'd been drafted into the army. The war, all the Syrian war began in 2011. Here I protect my country, this is my duty. I joined the army as a volunteer after the massacre in the town of Kashmir. I saw the gunmen killing all soldiers from engineer troops. I couldn't stop that. My uncle and a cousin were killed. We will continue fighting until we free Syria from all gunmen. I want women to help the Syrian army because the gunmen will kill everyone, women and children. I actually saw children dying, lying on the ground. Women, 
being cruelly tortured. People we had never seen before did all of that. I have a wife and four sons. When I speak to my son on the phone and he asks me, Father, when will you come back? I answer him. Wait for me. I will come soon as I finish my duty. Ten days ago, my friends came under fire and died in homes. Lord, have mercy upon them. My uncle is a general on the Syrian army. He also died at the hand of terrorists. Lord, have mercy upon him. Before people can freely drive from Damascus to Al-Qasmim without their ID being checked, the roads were safe, but now they can't drive even three kilometers. I want our country to become safe again. When we win, we will restore Syria. That's, I guess really the point that I wanted you to be able to see. I wanted you to see too that these women are not in the bondage as those that are being backed by the U.S. government. And this is the sad truth of it. This is so much um, that's going on. And then as I said, what, what we saw here, what Marad Kazdev what he's bringing out that just happened again, more of the rebels shelling, killing, and maiming children there in the region. And, and it's not to say that Russia's, the bombs that they dropped, that it's not caused death of children as well. I'm not saying that that's not the case. I'm sh there's no doubt that does happen. It's not intentional. But the thing is, is when the U.S. intentionally are backing these thugs that they know have no regard for life whatsoever, that makes me wonder about the Obama administration and what their real motive is.